All right, wealthy teachers, welcome Dr. Erica Bowling. I'm super excited for this. Uh, Erica has been in the academics mean business community for a really long time, and we've been watching her over the last few years, and I know she has some exciting updates for us. So I'm excited to bring her to you and to, uh, yeah, share her story about how she's making money online teaching, how her, how she was able to leave actually academia as an associate professor, and you know what she's up to now. So welcome, Erica. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we've been talking for a while and finally uh, getting ready to share my story. Thanks for having yeah, me. Of course. So why don't we hear a little bit about um, maybe what you were like, the whole academic and <laughs> experience and how you were kind of balancing that with having a, um, you know, being an entrepreneur and running, um, running a business. Yeah, um, I I have been in uh, academia. Uh, I just recently uh, early retired from Rutgers University uh, after about 17 years. Mm. And um, it uh, it basically started out where my online business basically was just a, a, a hobby. I was doing stuff involved with uh, canine fitness and, and dog sports. And um, it wasn't until a, a few years ago that I even considered growing it and um, making it into a business. I really just saw it as just some additional side money. And um, once I kind of got, you know, got the bug and decided <laughs> I wanted to kind of see how big I can make this and have an online academy, um, it was, you know, it was tough um, because, you know, you have a full-time job and then you're, you're, you're working like nonstop on your free time on the business. But a, a key thing that really helped me is I was so, you know, I am so passionate about about my um, my online business that I created, that to be honest, um, a lot of times it didn't feel like work. Like I would be working at the university, teaching till like seven, eight at night. I would be getting home at sometimes 10, 9.30 at night. And I, I was actually like excited, like I couldn't wait to to start working on my online stuff. So I would almost treat it like a reward. It would be like, okay, mm. go grade my university papers. And as a reward, I can go work on my online business. Oh <laughs> so, my gosh, that's funny. I love that. Um, so, you know, it was a lot of hours and, you know, almost like, you know, seven days a week, pretty much. But a, a lot of times, you know, it it didn't feel like I was like, the, I was doing work, but it didn't feel like it was like, like this big, horrible thing because I was so excited about it. Mm. Can I ask yeah. what you were doing like at, in the evenings when you got home from teaching? Like what uh, what was happening in your house, in your home office that was making yeah. it seem so fun? <laughs> <laughs> so I would I would come home. Um, I, I live alone. I have uh, I have dogs with me. And so I would come home and I would um, basically like Eat, eat, eat a late dinner, turn on the TV. And then I would do, I love, uh, my background is education and I love creating content, creating mm. courses. And so brainstorming on like, what's the next program I'm going to offer and what's the next course I'm going to create. And so a lot of times it was either kind of course creation and coming up and brainstorming creative ways and things to offer my online clients, or um, I like technology. And so sometimes I would be just, you know, chilling and watching TV and and doing some video editing and playing with some new technology program that I wanted to use with my business. So, um, so it, it would be a combination of stuff, you know, normally when you'd sit and watch TV, I would just be like major multitasking and, and, and working <laughs> on stuff <laughs> is what I would be doing. Yeah. Um, but, um, I mean, it definitely, you know, was work and, you know, I did notice that when my business ramped up, my online business, you know, um, I I wasn't involved as much with the canine sports because I used to drive like three hours one way for training and um, my every weekend would be on the road training. And that did kind of back off a bit. Um, mm. And I was doing less traveling on the weekends. And um, I was also doing traveling about an hour once a week and doing boxing classes with a coach. <laughs> wow! And when I launched my online mastermind program, um, you know, it, I, you know, I had like one day free and I just didn't want to spend that day on the road commuting, you know, two mm. hours and another that was a huge chunk out of my day. I still went to the gym, but the amount of hours I would spend spend commuting for that one on one session 
I, you know, that did, I did kind of have to sacrifice that whenever I added a new program because I wanted, I, you know, I needed some more time just for me. Um, did anything in your teaching take a backseat to like any sort of commitments to the college? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I would say what, what, took a backseat first was actually um, my research Mm. um, Mm -hmm. because the stuff that I was researching, you know, my passions and my interests started to take a different direction. And so there was a shift where I was doing I was still writing and publishing, but it was now on a different topic (laughs) related to my business. And, um, and so I actually, when I kind of knew that I wanted to leave academia, I kind of, um, that was kind of the first thing, kind of my hours and commitments that started to decline was, you know, the hours of the research and writing and publishing and, you know, getting all those critiques and bouncing it from journal to journal. That was kind of the first thing that started to take a backseat. And, um, um, you know, my students were a top priority. I wanted, you know, it's it's not their fault <laughs> that, yep. you know, my passions <laughs> and interests were changing and that I wanted to pursue something different. And I love teaching in general, no matter what kind of content. So I really wanted to make my teacher, you know, my teaching and my students be a priority. And I mm. did not want that to suffer. I did not want them to have the effects of my interests changing, impacting sure. them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I love that you shared this because it's definitely something that I've had from a lot of interviews with academics. Um, It's just, yeah, when you start a business, something has to give. Maybe it's the Netflix (laughs) binging at night. Maybe it's, right? Like maybe it's the extra committee that you were on just because you, whatever, were doing like how most of us do. Um, And so I think sharing just uh, what things, uh, replaced yeah. that is helpful. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's a big sacrifice, you know, it affected yeah. personally, you know, I, I, I gave up my, I love, I loved my boxing sessions. Mm-hmm. I love that mm-hmm. one-on-one, mm-hmm. you know, um, the traveling and, you know, training out of state with my dog. And, you know, that affected me on a, you know, on a personal level and the things I enjoyed doing, but, you know, it was a balance on what was I, you know, giving up and what was I getting. And, yep. uh, and, and that was true professionally, you know, things that had to take a back seat. So that's very true. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit. You brought it up for, uh, you touched on it. Like when I decided that I wasn't going to stay in academia, can you bring us back <sighs> to more of wh- like how you came to that decision? Yeah. A series of kind of events that might have happened. Yeah. <laughs> Any, anything to enlighten us on that? Because that is not an easy decision. No, it was really hard. Um, at first, I never even dreamed it was possible. I never mm. dreamed that I could financially and, you know, be able to walk away from a tenured position like that. And um, once I started to get the idea and started to believe that it was possible, then it a lot of fear, you know, a lot of fear was around it. And it would be, you know, one day I'd be like, oh, yeah, I want to leave. And the next day, I can't, I can't, how can I leave? And then the next right. day, I want to leave. And um, basically, I had you know, I just wasn't getting the the fulfillment and just wasn't having that passion. Over a number of years, it was slowly changing. And I tried for a number of years to really bring that passion back into what I was doing at the university. And um, I was journaling the whole time. So, you know, mm. I could kind of document the process. And what happened was um, I have a business coach and we had a retreat. I went to California and had a retreat. And um she had us do this exercise where we had a little journaling activity and we had to reflect on like where we see our lives and imagine ourselves like a year from now and what are we doing and what's our life look like and how are we living? And I started journaling and I just started crying. I just started like bawling (laughs) and it was very emotional for me. It was a very distinct moment where I remember all of a sudden, I was like, this is not a choice. It's not a decision. It's something I have to do. And it was just that moment where I was like, you know, for me to live the life and be the person and have the happiness I want, it, it just struck me then and there that it's no longer a question of do I or, or don't I. I just came to the realization that I 
I have to do this. I have to mm. move forward. Um, but it was it was really challenging. And, um, you know, it was a process of a number, you know, a few years of realizing it was possible. And then like a whole nother year, even just building up the courage. And, you know, I got a, a life coach to help me deal with the struggles and the guilt I was feeling and mm. getting a financial advisor to help me figure out what do I need to do financially to be established and comfortable enough to leave that position. So it was definitely a process. Hmm. Sounds like you did it really responsibly. Like you, you, yeah, much more than I think me and Lindsay did. It was, we were so <laughs> irresponsible. I know we, we just, just jumped feet first straight into it. <laughs> yeah. and it was, I, I know that feeling of just the recognition of it's, it's going to happen. Like it doesn't, yeah. it's not a question of if just when, right. And I, I yeah. think Lindsay and I felt the same thing and, and yeah, yeah we just, you saw it ahead of you and it was almost in hindsight, we look back and we're like, we should have done it sooner. Yes. But, um, yeah. We just did it when we did it because it felt like, yeah, inevitable. It's going to happen. Yeah, it, it was it, event. At first it was do I or don't I? Mm. And then it was like, I, I'm going to, I have to. And then it was just a question of when yeah. after that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And even when you make up your mind, it's always that scary discussion with someone in your department. Because the second you bring it up, it's it's <laughs> done, right? It's it's happened. You it's, can't you can't have yes. to. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, um, they wanted. I met with my dean face to face. I scheduled a meeting with him. He was completely shocked. Like he mm. he his face. He um, but he was when I explained what I was doing and why. He was just so happy for me uh-huh. that um, I you know and envious and um, yeah. but. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. And then when he told me, you know, he needed to have like a written, uh, like a letter of resignation, like that was to me, that was like the point to actually put it in writing and hand him the letter. It was like, Mm -hmm. it's official now. (laughs) No turning Mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Very, very difficult. It was very hard for uh, at that point, you know, it was easier, but coming to that decision and being able to reach that point was not an easy process and an emotional one, a lot of ups and downs. Sure. Right. Yeah. So let's start, let's talk about like where you are now and like a little bit about how your business is set up and how you make money teaching online. And I love that it's around animals and it's definitely (laughs) very different than college. Like you you alluded to, I love teaching whatever the content. So tell us a little bit about how you have your business set up and how you make money teaching. Yeah, it's really interesting because my background in education is um, my research is online teaching and learning. Oh, and, no way. and I also taught a digital story co- um, program for my oh, cool. um, my teachers that I would teach. And so I had this passion for teaching. I had a passion for technology and online teaching and learning and multimedia. And I had this passion for dogs and a passion mm. for fitness. <laughs> and so what I essentially did was I combined all my loves together and I created an online um, canine fitness certification program where people learn about how to keep their sport dogs and working dogs fit and healthy and injury free. And um, I turned it into an online program. And that was my first kind of, um, I have an introduction, introductory course, so like a foundation course, and then the more um, advanced elite canine athlete program. And it leads to uh, a, a certification that, um, that I was able to create. And so it was able to combine, you know, all my interests, my expertise and brought it all together. So I'm still teaching, you know, I still have, you know, students and I'm mentoring and coaching. It's just a different content. And then, so I have an online certification program and it's designed where they have online content. So there's online two courses. We do biweekly group coaching calls where we meet online and I, I, I'll use like GoToMeeting or Zoom to meet online. We record the sessions and then they get one-on-one coaching. So they get um, a, a welcome kind of jumpstart orientation, um, one-on-one virtual call. And then they get, um, they get five hours of one-on-one coaching and it's a six month long, uh, intensive program. So that was my kind of signature program that really launched my online Academy. And then what happened was, um, the, uh, I ended up attracting a lot of canine business owners. Mm. Um, I thought I was going to attract a lot of competitors and competition people, And I had all of these business owners who actually, they were the ones who asked for the certification. They said, can you offer a certification? It will help us in our marketing of our programs. Yeah. 
So, That's perfect. Yeah. So that um, so that's how the certification came along. And then I realized that a lot of most of the canine professional dog trainers, they did not have much business or any formal business training. And some of them are starting to move online and do online resources, online, um, you know, Facebook groups mm-hmm. for their programs, online courses. So that was a perfect fit. So I started, um, I then I developed a, a mastermind, a business mastermind program oh, cool. that is a, a membership program, a month to month membership program, where um, it's not just canine fitness, but uh, a lot of other types of canine professionals. And I, um, I basically help them in their businesses and help them, um, you know, kind of growing their online audience, um, getting more visibility, developing online programs or hybrid type programs, you know, face to face and online. You know, some of them are building online video library resources for their clients. And so those are kind of the two key components of my online academy is the elite canine athlete certification program and then my canine business program. And then um, I just recently launched a brand new course. I wanted something at a more entry level that is more accessible financially and time wise to other types of professionals. And I just um, I ju- I'm just now wrapping up. It's called the Mission Ready Canine. It's an online course specifically for military police and search and rescue canine canine mm-hmm. handlers. And, mm-hmm. um, and that's to get the information out niche. to their communities to keep their dogs safe and healthy and fit to basically um, help them in the jobs that they do and keep us safe. Oh, that's incredible. It sounds like you have like every gap covered. <laughs> like you have literally <laughs> right? every part of online business, like from your own <laughs> community, you know, people that you're, yeah. you're content training and then also business specific training. <laughs> It's really incredible. How long how long have you been in business? Like how long did it take to get to the point where you have all these different um, well, products? Well, um, I would say I, I officially kind of launched my LLC um, back, I think it was around 2014. And then before 2014, I was kind of informally, you know, doing it, uh, you know, doing my starting up my, my first online course. And then it really took off whenever I hooked up with um, my friend and mentor, Jane Duber, who's my, my business coach also. And I actually joined her mastermind program. That was a few years ago. Um, gosh, I guess it's been maybe closer to three years ago. And that's when I put my content together on an online academy and then got much more strategic with my marketing. Mm. So the elite canine athlete program and the foundation course that comes with it has been around, Oh my, it's probably been about the initial course, probably four years ago. And then um, it was over a year ago, maybe it's, uh, gosh, it's going towards the second year of my mastermind program and the Mission Ready Canine program. Um, I just uh, did enrollment um, a month ago um, for that program. And then um, and then I do have in the mastermind various levels. So I do have um, higher end like VIP mastermind where they get um, one-on-one bi-weekly one-on-one coaching with me along with the group coaching and with the online content. So I have different levels of that. So so um, I would say in the last three years, things really started ramping up. And then, of course, being able, you know, recently leaving the university, it's like now I can really, you know, get serious and dive in and uh, ramp up my marketing strategies and stuff like that. So um what really helped me was being having my background in education and mm. my expertise in curriculum design. So I can put together online content and online programs much faster than the typical person. And I, I'm not just, I've had people tell me this and my, my business coach tells me she's amazed at how quickly I, I can create content. But I, I relate that to my years and years and years in education as being a teacher and in, in academia and having so many years experience in creating courses and programs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we can relate to that, Lindsay. Just mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. being the fact of being teachers, it's very comfortable just creating a product yeah. that's st- strictly teaching. And yeah. Yeah. you know what to focus on, you know what to ignore, you know what to not, not to worry about, not yeah. to waste your energy and time on. You can put together a learning product pretty easily. Yeah. And when I, you know, and I coach and help people design online courses and they always ask me, they'll be like, you know, how long did it take you to get this up? And I'm like, you know, I'm not, you can't base it on me because (laughs) I've got a PhD in education and, you know, curriculum design and um, online teaching and learning is my focus. So, you know, I would say that my ability to get this out as quickly as I did is, is not the norm. Mm -hmm. 
and it probably helps with selling because you have confidence that you know it's going to be actually transformative and get get the outcomes you're promising the the people who purchase it. So I bet yeah, that helps definitely. with marketing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, adds to my confidence. You know, in the online um, business because I've got so much background in that area. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm-hmm. I would love, I'm curious to hear how you uh, grew your audience. That's something that our Build a Better Beta students um, struggle with and people who like are wanting to launch more products and impact more people. Um, but it's, it's the, I don't have an audience to sell to, or I don't, um, you know, maybe I put something out and no one is listening. Um, what kind of tips do you have for really growing a, a community of people who were following you and listening to you and engaging with you? If you had any thoughts on that, that would be awesome. Yeah, I I do a lot on social media. I'm very, very active on Facebook. um, And I'm very much I know some people kind of look at Facebook just as kind of, you know, for the business, but I'm just, you know, that's where my friends are. That's where I hang out. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I build, you know, have relationships and good friends um, that I've never met face to face that are on Facebook. And so um, I already, you know, was really active on Facebook before I really launched it, you know, my my business. And I already was involved in the canine community because because I would compete and participate in dog training and competition. So I did have some access to some of that community already. And so I started building it. I did a lot of um, creating content. Um, I had online um, online articles, online videos, and would put opt-in pages where people, you know, to collect email addresses. Um, I have a business Facebook page where I do uh, every Friday, I do a Facebook live show. And um, uh, one thing that was huge for me, and this is part of my background, I think being a teacher and an educator is I was very comfortable doing like online, um, online webinars and online workshops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So my very first online webinar, my free online webinar I ever did, I had over 400 people sign up. And some of the, for me, what's been really successful in growing my following, building my email list is doing the free webinars and the free trainings. And then the, um, the social media interactions, my Facebook lives have been really essential in building the solid Mm. relationships with my online audience. Um, And then I have my Facebook groups where I'm really active. You know, I have my Facebook groups for my students and clients, but then I have um, Facebook groups that, you know, the general public can come in and join. And so I'm, you know, I I make sure I, on a daily basis, you know, I try to at least acknowledge if they've posted something in there and, and try to stay, you know, as active as I can in there. So that's been huge. I do, I did realize that when I started my Facebook live shows every week, um, that kind of ramped up building a stronger connection with my audience. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, that's, that's excellent to a point. But when you're looking at wanting to build a brand and build a business and, and, and really establish yourself as an expert in an area nationally and internationally, um, I find that what was really helpful for me then was doing things like um, I write for, um, I write for magazines and journals that are well respected in in the field and um presenting at you know face to face at conferences and mm. making face to face connections um through organizations and conferences and getting pub- you know publications out there in um well respected uh journals and articles and magazines and also for national and international organizations that do like um quarterly newsletters or magazines that they publish um, I would just contact people and organizations that I thought had the right kind of audience for me. And I would be like, hey, are you, um, you know, I, I would love to, you know, write for your journal. I'd love to write for your magazine. And I think this would be great for your audience. And I had, I've gotten a lot of opportunities to get my content out, you know, to people who maybe who aren't on Facebook <laughs> and other types of professional communities by um, just kind of reaching out. And that, that again is, an advantage of having my academia background is writing, you know, writing articles. And so Mm -hmm. for me to be able to, you know, write the blogs and write the, you know, for their journals and their magazines, um, I really kind of jumped on that. And that has really helped me. I, I think with the, international and national international visibility and and people seeing me um you know kind of as a the go-to person in this area and so that has been that has been really important 
maybe I would say on social media, I gain the numbers. I get a lot more numbers of people following me, but I'm doing those types of outreach things for conferences, presentations, face-to-face, and my publications, I would say that has done a, a has tremendously supported in getting me the visibility and being seen as an expert. I think that's all great advice. Yeah, you're covering everything. Social media, publications, yeah. And I, I yeah. think you're exactly right. The ability to write, write things quickly, get them out there published is huge, valuable. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I tell my, my clients who are trying to, you know, get more visibility. And I said, you know, just reach. I can't tell you how many editors, they, they're like, thank you, thank you. Like, they're so appreciative that I turn things in on time. <laughs> and they're so appreciative that when I give them an article, they have minimal to no editing that they have to do. Mm-hmm. And so I find that when you can be on time, get your content in, have good quality content, they are thrilled to work with you and want you to keep Keep writing for them. Yep. Can I switch gears back to your courses? Uh, I'm curious what things are working for course delivery. Like what things are helping your students get results with uh, your online teachings? Yep. I have um, um, an online platform that has some structures into it to kind of help kind of through the psychological processes of keeping them motivated and and going through. So um, I have things, for example, where I have them set kind of like weekly goals and they can either do it on the platform. We we have what's called the intention tracker or even in my Hmm. Facebook groups. Um, So I find having them reflect, having them kind of tap into what are my goals for the week? What do I want to achieve? And kind of have that self-reflection in their learning. Again, that comes back to my academia and teacher mode. (laughs) Um, And um, the social stuff, um, interacting, whether it's um, our biweekly group coaching calls and also the Facebook group, having the interaction. You know, I just really, um, I did not, with my background in education, I did not want to develop a type of online program that's just the standalone program where, you know, they get really motivated, they log in, they get through the first couple of lessons and the motivation drops. Mm-hmm. And um, they've told me, my, my students will tell me that those biweekly group coaching calls and, you know, the people who do the one-on-one coaching with me, um, those types of interactions, I feel like are so essential. And a lot of people, I think there's a lot of people out there, they think, you know, oh, this is an easy way to make money. I'm just going to create an online course, pop it up there, and it's just going to run by itself. And I find that to keep my clients motivated, engaged, and keep them working through the program, um, having that personal connection, having that, you know, touching in the group calls once a month, you know, every other week, um, and having them, you know, I have action guides and where they, they reflect upon their learning, they set goals, they do activities. It's very engaging and not just a passive learner. And that's been really um, key for keeping my 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 clients engaged and motivated and progressing through the content. And then um, recently, I, um, I saw that some people, you know, the, I work with business owners, and they are so crazy busy, they have no time to get stuff done. And so I saw that they needed a little boost, a little boost to help stay motivated and accomplish their goals. So I offered them, I said, Hey, are you guys interested in having um, accountability pa- partners? Let me know if you're interested and I'll pair you up or put you in groups of three. And that way they don't just have accountability with me during like our biweekly group calls, but then they have each other and a little bit more accountability put in place there. And the, um, some of the ones that have pursued that they've, they have expressed to just how terribly helpful it's been. Um, it keeps them on track, keeps them motivated. And that's been really, really helpful, I find, in, in structuring the support. So I kind of take a multi-pronged approach. You've got the standalone content where they can click through and watch the videos and go at their own pace. Um, I have the kind of accountability where, you know, checking in or weekly updates and then um, the social component. And I find that different people are going to gravitate to different aspects of that. But having that multi-pronged approach to support them um, has been very beneficial, especially for my more extensive programs, you know, a six month long program. Um, and it's, it's very comprehensive. So, you know, keeping them at, you know, as motivated in month three or four as when they very first joined, you know, that could be a challenge. And so th- those are some Definitely. of the things that I've found ha- and, and that they've told me that has helped them um, progress and stay committed and, and, and stay motivated and engaged um, in the programs. Can I ask which platform has the, the built-in kind of self-reflection that you were talking about, the weekly yeah. goals? Yeah. 
Um, um, if you, uh, there's a, a business is called Global Experts Accelerator and um, uh, Jane Duber, my friend and mentor, um, this is actually a platform that her business developed and I was using Teachable and then I moved to Kajabi. And um, the reason why I moved to, to their platform was those those initial platforms, you're kind of creating the course yourself, you're uploading the content, or you have to hire somebody to do it. And um, you end up as your business is growing, I found that I was spending more time on the administrative side of stuff. And I wanted to spend my time creating content and teaching. And with this platform, um, basically, I have a whole team and IT team people to support me. And now I basically take my content, take my videos, and, you know, take my handouts, and I send them to them and they basically build the courses for me. They put the content up for me. If students are having technical problems, they go to them for support, for tech support. So um, in addition to having the online platform that has the things like this intent, weekly intention tracker and other, there's other features in there that help um, help guide them and motivate them to keep progressing, I, I actually get a whole team of people to support me um, with my online academy. And so for me, um, as I was growing and I wanted to continue to grow and I didn't want to spend my time, you know, answering, you know, hey, my login doesn't work. I can't get in Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, or, you know, um, spending hours and hours uploading videos and uploading handouts. Um, To me, it was so worth it to um, to switch the platform and have this platform. And then I I get this, you know, team of people to support me along the way. Hmm. Lindsay, have you heard of that Global Experts Accelerator? Mm Mm-mm. Yeah, Super neither. interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna Google it. I am too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, and if anybody you know is interested, um, well, normally what I do is uh, I kind of introduce you um, to the team there, and um, then they're happy to um, hop on a, a conference call and kind of go over all the features and the unique things about the program. But um, the what I also like about it is it had a lot of, has a lot of automated stuff in it built yeah. in to motivate students to keep progressing. So when they complete a module, they have an email that you wrote, you know, it's like, congratulations, you know, keep moving forward. And if they've stayed too long in a module and they don't move forward, there's an automated message that you wrote that will email them and prompt them and say, Hey, we see you haven't progressed to the next module. Don't forget, we've got all these amazing things happening. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. it has, um, it has some nice automation in there on the admin side that is very personal. It's very personalized, but um, but it saves me a lot of time. Whereas before yeah. I was manually like creating these emails and having to monitor where they were and who I was messaging. And that was another aspect of the platform that I really liked. Cool. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I have a question about your certification. We get asked quite a bit how, how to start a certification. And I, I've never had a good answer. And in my head, it's always you you become the expert and you decide what the certification entails. And then if people want to hire you to be certified, then you have now have a certification, right? Is, is there anything more to it? Is there a governing body of certi- certifications that exists? Um, there are, I mean, there are, you know, in academia, you can go through different organizations where people can get, you know, uh, continuing education credits or get programs approved and stuff at like that higher ed level. Um, So there are different types of programs like that that exist. But when it comes to the actual content that you're teaching, it's going to depend on what area you're covering. Because for example, in canine massage and in canine fitness, there is no national organizing body that oversees this. There there are no, in, in in massage, there are some state rules and regulations and laws um, in some states, in other states, it's completely wide open. Somebody could just mm. put a sign in front of their door and say, Hey, you know, I, I do canine massage the same with dog training. There is no national, um, organization that oversees, you know, dog trainer certifications. Um, anybody could be like, Hey, I'm a, I'm a professional dog trainer. And so depending on what field you are, there are some areas where there are laws and there are state or national regulations that you need to follow. If you're in an industry where there is not that kind of, you know, standardization or control or no, you know, legalities around what you can or cannot do, then yeah, essentially somebody can be like, hey, you know, there's a need for this. I have knowledge. Um, People like to, you know, have something to show their accomplishments. And, um, and, 
you know, there's so many areas that you can come in and create a certification. So I would say looking at what is, there has to be a need for it. You know, my mm. people, my people came to me because they're business owners and they wanted to put on their websites, you know, something more official to say, I didn't just go, I, you know, I'm not just coming here telling you, Hey, bring your dog to me and I will teach you fitness. They can say, I actually did a program. I had to actually demonstrate knowledge and yep. here's the program and here's my certification. And, um, so you have to have an audience that is going to benefit and have value from it and see value in it. Mm -hmm. And then when you're creating the certification, what I like to do for me, it was based on um, kind of performance and knowledge, assessing their knowledge and performance. And so I had to think about when somebody graduates from my program, what knowledge and skills and beliefs do I want to instill in them? And then I have to think about, okay, if they're going to graduate, I have to assess this. I need to be able yep. to have them demonstrate to me that they have the knowledge, they have the skills and, you know, the beliefs that I'm wanting to instill. And so, again, this is my educational background stepping in, um, um, you know, building assessments, you know, educators, teachers, we're used to creating all kinds of assessments and ways to assess our students. So basically what I did was I, I thought about, I went from backwards, I started with the back, you know, back end design and thinking about, okay, at the end of my program, what do I want to achieve? And then I mapped backwards, what do I need to develop in my certification program to ensure that they have those outcomes? Yeah. And then I created my assessment system based on that. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yay. That was a good question. Cause yeah, we get that a lot. Mm. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. This has been a really fun conversation. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, and for the people who don't have that educational background, um, I find that that's an area where they, they really can use the support is, you yeah. know, because they're like, so how true. in the world, you know, what am I assessing? How do I assess them? And that's, you know, that's where having the educational background comes in really helpful. For sure. Definitely. Very cool. Well, this has been a really fun conversation. It's so exciting to know you've been around the academics mean business community. I was actually, as you were sharing, you know, sitting down with the dean, I was like, I kind of remember you posting about this in the Facebook group. Yes. Um, so <laughs> it's cool. And I'm so excited for you. And I, I love how you, um, you know, shared the ups and the downs of it as well. And the tough decisions that we have to make, because I think as much as we can paint that for people, uh, the better, but yes. hopefully you're hearing this and like, yeah, I have those skill sets too. And maybe you don't love dogs, but you love something else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. You don't, you definitely don't have to create a teaching business, a course business based on what your research was on in any way, shape or form. Um, I know, well, my, my research actually came up today in our community, but either way, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's lots of people out there that need our help and we're freaking good teachers. So we might as well get paid for it, right? Exactly. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Erica. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. It's great talking with you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.